Oh, oh yeah. So now we're gonna stay in the NBA. We're gonna move on to something a little more interesting. Did I say interesting? I mean, oh, new coach alert. You know what the time it is. That's right, folks. The Orlando Magic then funked them a coach. I can't believe it either. And Jamal Mosley. And the Pelicans, it seems like they went a whole different route as well with their new coach, Willie Green. Both of these gentlemen, long time assistants. Um, finally getting a shot at the big time. Um, both of them happen to be African American, if people want to know that. That's out there as well. Um, you know, the Magic being a franchise that haven't won much. So, you know, Jamal Mosley, <laughs> shots out to you. And then the Pelicans being a team that, you know, we didn't we didn't talk about a lot on the show. Um, when will they hit their stride with Zion and Brandon Ingram? So with that said, Jay, my question to you is which team got the better new coach? Is it the Magic or the Pelicans? Oh, that's a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tough one. Uh, first, you know, before I even bother with the question, I gotta thank you from the bottom of my heart for telling me uh, the race of the two coaches. You know how much I'm a fan of that. I really like to go get in the weeds on race, so thank you. Okay. Uh, but I, you know, if in I had time, to pick, you know, <laughs> if I had to pick. <laughs> If I had to pick the better coach, and these are both first time head coaches, I'm probably gonna give Mosley the edge because just of his experience. He got he got um he got about he got 15 years of NBA coaching experience. He started out with the Nuggets uh, when he was 27 as a as an assistant. And now at the age of 42, he you know, he's been four years with the Nuggets, four years in Cleveland, and now seven with Dallas. Had a really good relationship with uh Luka Doncic. So um you know, I, I lean towards him as opposed to Willie Green. Willie Green, you know, surprisingly, this guy, he only been an assistant for three years. Now, he did have, he did have a 12-year NBA career, and we're, I think we're seeing a trend of more and more players get hired super quick, you know, almost as soon as they, oh, you done playing? Okay, come on in, Coach Steve Nash. So we have that going on. Now, that's the now Jason that, that, Kidd, Derek Fisher effect. Jason Kidd, yeah, right, Derek Fisher. I almost forgot about Derek Fisher. Yeah, that next stuff was rough, but uh, you know, but even but even so, like, even though I think Jamal Mosley might be, my, uh, that's what I think he looked like. He might be the better coach right now. We don't know. He's the first time he had coaches, but I tell you, man, this it's rough because you talk about a rebuild. He about a, the first call he should have made after he signed the contract was to a construction crew because there's a oh, there's a lot to do, man. There's a lot to do. This, have you have you seen this roster? This is and this this wait, 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 wait. So are you saying he out here handing out hard hats? Can't cross this line without a hard hat. Is that what no, you're saying? Every matter of fact, they should practice with hard hats on. That's what they should do. <laughs> Get a hard hat, strap it on, and let's go to work, man. This cause this and you know, there's actually some there's some names on this roster, but like then you look at guys like Otto Porter making like $28 million and you're like, well, this don't fit at all. They couldn't move. I mean, they can't, they can't move this guy. This dude over here with that lemon contract, Gary Harris, he was a throw in in the Aaron Gordon thing. This team, this team traded away Evan Fournier, who I'm, I don't even know why I started with him, but him, Vucevic yeah, and about, Aaron Gordon, three of the guys who, you know, have kind of been, they've been on the magic for several years. They've been kind of treading water. Like they'll make the playoffs in the seven, eight C and they won't do nothing. But they completely abandoned it. It's it's probably about time they try to start it up again. But this is going to be this is going to be a tough job. Now the good thing about it is the expectations are probably on the floor. So all you got to do is be able to pick your feet up, and you probably can uh, surpass them. But uh, you know it's it is an opportunity, and if you have success down here, you're going to get a lot of credit because there ain't much going on there right now. I mean the guy I'm looking at, who you know I'm looking, I mean Terrence Ross. That's kind of to me the most the most guy with some name value. Jonathan they still Isaac. got Mokel. They still got Mokel folks, right? No Mokel folks. I think he's. I think he's somewhere on it. Yeah, he's there. He's. Oh. He's been kind of look like he showed some flashes. He looked better than he did in Philly. Mo Bamba is still out here. Cole Anthony. They drafted last year. They hopefully they got some picks. I, I reckon. I guess they got some picks. They are gonna have to use these picks. But Willie Green. Willie Green. If you um, in the Willie Green news, I don't think that's official yet. That just all indications that we're seeing seem to be leading us to Willie Green. Uh, he go, you know, he, if he gets hired, he'll be the third uh, youngest head coach in the league behind uh, OKC's Mark uh, Dagenault and uh, Taylor Jenkins, uh, for what that's worth. But um, 
you know, maybe maybe there is something to, to some youth because they did they had um, Zion in his first two years. He said, you know, two of the more uh, older coaches in the league and Alvin Gentry and Stan Van Gundy, Van Gundy and uh, David Griffin. We talked about they, you know, they couldn't get it together and see eye to eye. So uh, maybe one thing they was looking at was to get a guy in there younger who can, you know, relate to these young players that they have, particularly Zion, particularly Brandon Ingram. And we know how important that is with your the, the relationship between your star players and your coach. You know, the star players run the NBA. That's how it is. Um, but we just, you know, there's a lot of unknowns. You know, David, I think as as much as Willie Green, there's no doubt. Willie Green got the two building blocks. Jamal Mosley just out here. He looking for blocks, period, to build with. But it's going to be, to me, it's going to be about David Griffin, He's gonna he's gonna have a big impact on if Willie Green gonna be successful or not, because he gotta as I've said before, David Griffin he gotta spend some time, you know, look himself in the mirror, stop pulling this old Eric Bledsoe, Lonzo Ball crap that just it looked like a racket from the start, and then you gotta hit, you, you gotta a place a premium on shooters. That's one thing that Philadelphia learned this year. They got some more shooters that and that's kind of how they unlocked the full potential until they you know we know it didn't finish quite the way they wanted to. But they look like they were more capable of doing big things. So, you know, for me, when I look at New Orleans, I'm going to be looking more at David Griffin than Willie Green. And then Orlando, I, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to look at to him. But I do wish this guy, Jamal Mosley, the absolute best of luck. That's going to be a tough job. All right, so I'm, I want to start off with a point you made about the youth. The youth, um, I beat this drum in the NFL and the NBA. Um, I said this on multiple shows. Um, I think it's kind of overrated how teams say, oh, you need the season, experience, veteran. I'm not saying that, like, all of them are overrated. But I think in certain situations, the season veteran coach ain't the answer. Um, and I think in this in this series – I'm and I'm speaking about the Pelicans right now. I think the Pelicans going to get green is a move I like, a move I would have voted for, a move I would have been for because sometimes you got to talk these young fellas' language. It's, that's just what it is. Like, you come in here with that, I used to coach Dwight Howard, and we made it to the mm -hmm. finals. I don't give a rip. I don't give a rip about that. Like, so, did y'all win? No, I don't care. Like, Okay, whatever. You got, you know, Alvin Gentry. I think Alvin Gentry was, he's like one of them guys. I don't think he was, a, I, him or Stan Van, Gunn, uh, Stan Van Gunn for this fact. I don't think Alvin Gentry was a bad coach, but once again, he's coming here with this dusty resume, and he's coming here with these artifacts, and Zion is like, okay, what else you got for me? Brandon Ingram is like, Cool. I'm glad to hear that, Coach. What, what else you got for me? So, I I like that you go with these young guys that can speak the language. And what I mean by speak the language, I'm not saying it's a different language to be said, but they know certain things. Think about these young guys. A lot of them like to play video games. Let me let me break this down a little bit. A lot of these young fellas like to play video games. Either they play video games, or a lot of them just be in the gym shooting around. You need a coach that could kind of relate to that, to be honest with you. It, you don't, it ain't a lot of sports that got the Nick Sabans out here where the dude like 70 and somehow these 18 and 19 year olds still love him to death. You ain't got a lot of situations like that, right? That's what make college a little more unique than the professionals, but that's another topic for another day. But sometimes you got to sit down with these young fellas and you know, what, what did you, you like to do? Like. Don't worry about basketball. Let me get to know you, Zion, as the person. Brandon Ingram as the person. Come on down. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Then let's get into some hoops. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then the fact of having a younger coach should help with the communication with David Griffin, like you said. You go up there. You say, hey, I right, I sat down with these guys. This is what I think about this guy. This is what I think about this guy. I think if we can make a trade for this, if we can trade this guy for this, that, and third, we we might not be like Western Conference Finals contenders, but we'll at least make the, the playoffs. We'll at least make the play-in tournament. I mean, the ceiling ain't that high right now. Or, or, or should I say, the line ain't that high right now. Listen, right now, as a Pelicans fan, you you just want to 
make it to playoffs. You just want to make the playoffs. Can we make the playoffs in the Zion Williamson era? Can we do that? So I think of the two jobs, Willie Green has the better of the job. I, I do think so. But I, I'm going to take Jamal Mosley for, for the, better, the better coach for the reason that you, you rolled out. He has an extensive resume. He's been waiting a, a long time for this opportunity. Now he gets it. Now my problem with him is he going down to Death Valley. It ain't talking LSU. Um, Siberia, um, Guantanamo Bay, um, Fort Leavenworth. I don't, whatever you want to call it down there, that is what the Orlando Magic is. You usually go down there to, uh, for your career to die. Let's be real. You heard what I said about Stan Van Gundy earlier. This team ain't been good since Stan Van Gundy was there. I'm just saying. Now, Jamal Mosley, can you go down there and make some shape? Hey, listen, we're going to give you a little salt. We're going to give you a little potato, but we need a full-course meal out of that. You figure it out because that's what's going to happen here. Um, now, can he do that? I do think he got some parts on that team. Once again, expectation. That's the word I couldn't get out earlier. The expectation for the Magic ain't that high. It's not that high. For them, it's probably a play-in tournament. Can we make it to the play-in tournament? Can we play in the play-in tournament? I mean, we want people to come and watch us play for something other than the bubble. Can we Can we do something here? So, I, I, I'll be honest, Jamal Mosley work is pretty cut out for him. But if he can turn this around being a new coach, um, you know, new, shall I say, African-American coach, um, you know, if he could turn this around, this is this is buckets. This is what you want. And I think he could make it happen. Now, listen, <laughs> what they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. This ain't going to happen in one season. But what can happen in one season is progression, strides, something to build upon. That can happen. And for both of these guys, that is what we're looking for. I, we're not asking for the Pelicans to be in the Western Conference Finals. We're not asking for the Magic to be in the Western Conference I mean, the Eastern Conference Finals. We're just asking for them to be watchable at this point. Because right now, if both teams played each other, me nor you nor half of ESPN or TNT going to watch that mess. We ain't watching. And you know I ain't lying. So with that said, I, I um, to answer the question, like I said, I think – Jamal Mosley is the better new coach. I just think that um, Willie Green is going into the better situation of the two.